Well, hey guys, today is a uh, a day that I never want to actually visit with one of the two saddest days in the boating time of the year. And today is winterizing. Yeah, winterizing the Boogaboo boat. Now, what I'm going to do today is hopefully get through everything I have to do, which is the generator, water system, the water purification, and the air conditioning and the toilet. So, I think that's pretty much it. So, I do have my handy dandy, beautiful Love It GoPro Hero 7 with me. So, I will try to capture as much as I can, but no promises that I'm, I'm going to get everything. I'm, I'm not going to go in uber uber detail. Um, what I do film, I'm just going to give you the quick rundown because I have only limited time today to work on this project. So, I want to get it done, wrapped up, and get off the boat. I don't want to get off the boat, but I have to get off the boat. I can't be here all day, let's put it that way. So like I said, I'm going to do what I can. Uh, first point of order is to pick up this stuff here. And just swing that around slowly. Yeah, so the first thing I got to do is, you know, put stuff out of the way. Tables, cushions, and whatnot. And of course, roll up the carpets, get them out of the way. And uh, move on from there. So, like I say, I will show you as much as I can, and I'm going to get at it right now. Winterizing. I just want to mention that this carpet has held up really, really well. Um, in case you missed it, there is my video for when we had the canvas done two, three years ago, actually. First summer we had the boat, first year we had the boat. And Craig over at Canadian Yacht Tops also did all the carpets in here. And like I said, it's held up really, really well considering you know how much travel we uh, do on it and the fact that our little granddaughters are on the boat once in a while with us. Our youngest, when the carpet was brand new, <laughs> she was out here without eyes directly on her. Myself and my son-in-law, my son were out the back of the boat or just on the dock. And my uh, lovely anchor girl and our daughter uh, were down in the cabin. And, you know, they're looking up and we're all kind of keeping an eye. But, you know, those three seconds that you look away, she grabbed a squeeze bottle of... Um, I think it was hand cream. <laughs> she went all over the carpet and she was mushing it in an area about this big, just going like this. And of course, Anchor Girl saw it and was like, Evelyn, what are you doing? And she, yeah. Anyway, so we wiped it up and figured out, okay, well, that's going to be a perma stain. It cleaned up and to this day, you cannot see it, which is really, really good. I mean, that's that talks more about the manufacturer of the carpet. But uh, uh, I, I'm following through with this line of thought that a few of you have suggested that we put down that faux teak rubber flooring, that permanent flooring down here. No, not a fan at all. Um, yeah, it has been offered to me at a very, very reasonable price. And uh, no, no, I'm not into it at all. Not at all. Our very first boat was a 1965 Shepard 26 foot cruiser. The thing never saw the water. We paid 600 and 650 bucks, I think, for it. It was a repo. But uh, I spent two years, this is before we got into serious boating, just working on it, playing with it, and passing time. It was, it was, it was a really fun experience for me. And, but I never saw the water. But that boat came equipped with that fake looking teak on the decks like the boat was a um, a plank mahogany hull but the decks were just plywood 
so it was a cheap boat when they built it new and to cover that plywood they just basically stapled on that vinyl that made it look like uh, teak and it was crap it just held the water and everything brought it away but to this day every time I see one of those boats finish on that and my mind instantly goes back to that so I I don't like it so it ain't gonna happen just putting that out there because I know a few guys suggest hey Paul why do you put that fake plastic or whatever it's called down the boat no we'll stick with this if this goes bad we'll replace it <laughs> anyways onward and upward Okay, starting with the generator. I've already had the generator running just so I'm not fighting with it to start because remember this is a stinky carbureted engine. Um, while I'm down here I'm just going to show you once again so I remember. Uh, the hour meter on this thing is showing. Let's focus here. 5,639.7 hours. Woo! That's a winner. Anyways, if you want to know why it says that so high, uh, I'll put a link in the description to another video um, to explain why that is misreading that high number. So what I've done is, first of all, shut off the seacock. That's where the uh, seawater comes in. It goes through a strainer and then out and then back around and into the cooling side of the engine. So I've disconnected that. I have my antifreeze down here, so I'll just take that line off, shove it into my antifreeze, stick her way down inside there, Ooh. shouldn't take much, but hey, you never know, so I'll stick it close to the bottom, but not right, right at the bottom, so it creates a vapor lock, and then fire it up, and it should suck that out and through and dump it out the side and then I know it's done. Okay, I'm gonna fire this up and hopefully everything cooperates as it should. Stand by for ignition sequence. As you can see, it took nearly that full jug. It's actually right at the bottom. So now all I'm going to do is, of course, take the hose out of there. And I'm going to take a look at the uh, strainer. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'll put some antifreeze in there for the winter as well. And then hook everything back up. Okay, for those of you who do not know what a sea strainer is or what it looks like or what it does, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to take that cap off. And the one side just loosens off. They both actually just loosen off. And then that side, you'll see that stud will just fall away. And then that lid will open up. See that? That doesn't have to come necessarily right off. And there is the strainer. And wow, did ever clean? So what that does is, as you can see, it is in line with the water coming from the seawater side. Of course, we're not in a sea, we're in a fresh lake here, but it's it's referred to as seawater. Seawater side through the strainer and then out, and the strainer is supposed to then catch any debris. Okay. I should do a standalone video on that because that is so interesting. So I am going to do my best to evacuate that water out of there and then I'm going to put some antifreeze in there. And then once the boat is hauled out 
for the winter for winter storage I will open that seacock again and just check it make sure that this line has drained by gravity back down of course if I open it now <laughs> there'd be a big problem because water would be gushing in uh, so I'll just open that up again and maybe just top up uh, the strainer with some antifreeze just to make sure that this line and everything else is copacetic for the winter and so we don't have a freezing issue so how to evacuate the water out of that thing I just use a small compact uh, shop vac it's a wet dry shop vac with of course no filter no bag in it and uh, that just sucks that water out nicely it's already done Yeah, so as you can see, it's nice and dry in there now. And uh, like I said, I'll just put some uh, antifreeze down there and then close it up. So that's it. Generator is done. Almost good to go. Like I said, the only thing that I have to do yet is once the bolt comes out of the water, I will open that seacock just to drain that line and check it, make sure it's all good and all the water's been evacuated out of it. Either maybe put a little bit of antifreeze back in that. Um, that uh, C strainer or just vacuum it. I'll probably just vacuum it out. I, I put just a little bit of antifreeze in there right now just in case some water sort of back flows into it uh, so it doesn't crack that glass canister which could happen. But the way that I winterize it is now uh, once I've done that last operation it's going to be good to go. So come springtime, I don't have to worry about opening a seacock or nothing. Just fire it up and it will be ready to start. So that's a summarizing, winterizing type of deal. Uh, the only thing I'm not going to do, the engines, the big boy engines, are going to be operating the same way. They would be winterized in the similar fashion because they are closed cooling, as is the generator. Uh, but I'm going to leave that to the marina. Two reasons why, first of all, the boat's going to come out of the water to do that. So whether I have time to do that at that point or not, I don't know. And second of all, if there's an issue with the uh, engines over the winter, it's on them. <laughs> so for a small bit of payment, it's a small, it's a big piece of insurance. So the big engines, I'll do everything else myself. I just got to top up the antifreeze on the uh, starboard side. It's down just a drop. Same with the uh, generator, uh, the, uh, the coolant, the internal coolant antifreeze. And that's it. But again, they will be done in such a way I will check the sea strainers once the boys have done the winterizing, make sure that they're clean and clear, and uh, then open up the sea strainers again. And like I say, they will be ready to start in the summer. A lot of marinas will charge for winterizing, and then in the springtime, they will charge you for summerizing your engines. And much to do to summarize an engine. The only thing they might have to do for um, if the engines weren't closed cooling the only difference for winterizing which I did on our two boats ago the 300 that had 350s and they were just um, um, they weren't they weren't fresh water cooled and so I would just pop the drains there was like four on each block let the water uh, uh, stream out and then I would put a little bit of antifreeze through the exhaust risers and wait for it to piss out through the out drives and then I knew it was good it was clean it's clear there was no water trapped anywhere in the cooling jackets so there was no threat of freezing and then I would put those drains back in and like I said then it was good to go for the spring some guys may not want to do that they may want to leave everything open for the winter just in case so there might be a little bit of work in the spring but it's really not a lot of work at all so just a heads up on that uh, summarizing charge you may see from your marina <laughs> I guess everything comes down to uh, comfort factor right you're comfortable to do yourself okay back at it next thing is going to be the air conditioning which is tied in to the water purification system so let's get on to that it's gonna be lunchtime soon. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> now, if you recall, we have this beautiful aqua water filtration system whereby we're drawing water out of the lake and it filters it, treats it with UV, and then I can fill up our freshwater holding tank. Um, 
at that time while we're on our way when we're traveling, which we did many times this year, this summer. It's a fantastic system. Again, I will leave a link in the description uh, to show you my install video with that. So what I'm going to do is uh, unspin these. That's where the filters are located. Just evacuate the water out of those as well. And then I'm going to pump uh, any freeze through the system. Now I'm going to show you, because I don't, I believe I didn't show where it's actually plumbed together with the air conditioning system or sorry, the reverse cycle heat air conditioning system and how it is getting the water. And I'm going to show you that now and, and, and why it's all tied together and winterized at the same time. Okay, traveling from that system where the line goes below and underneath and through and over to where the pump and everything is located. Climb down here. Yeah, so that line, where I'm picking up the water for that system is via the air conditioning pump. Now I've shut off the seacock here for the air conditioning because again, what it does, it draws seawater out and it pumps it through and up to the air conditioning head, which is underneath the bed at the front of the boat in the V-berth. So what I did, since we are drawing fresh water out of the lake, I needed to have a, a, a way to do that. So I just teed in to that line and then brought it up here and then that goes into that pump and then it goes through that filtration system. Um, like I say, I will show you the rest, of, uh, leave a link to the rest of the install there. Now, don't yell at me because this looks kind of chintzy, but it works. There's, uh, you know, it takes up some of the, the vibration. The only issue that I had was making some sort of bracket to mount this to. Uh, the reason I didn't want to take this over there is because it's a cluster of everything coming together over here. We have the starters. I have the uh, access um, to that sea strainer down there. Then the pump itself. And then there's breakers and wires and everything else. So I was going to kind of plumb it across there and around and back up. But I was apprehensive to cover any of the other stuff. So it works for now. And it works. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to disconnect this and then I can draw the antifreeze. First of all, for the AC, right out of this line, I'll just pop it into the. Uh, um, the container of antifreeze like I did with the generator and then I'll do the same I will pop that one in for that pump and that system and then I can kill two birds with two stones <laughs> okay I got the camera there I don't know how well that's gonna pick that up but let's hope for the best let your chips fall where they may make sure that it's right down in there yeah right down on the bottom now just start up the uh, start the actual air conditioning AC side, not heat. Sit, drawing that out through. That's that, we got pink coming out. Okay, so that's it. She worked good. I probably did not have to draw out so much material, but <clears throat> already, so I hooked this hose up to the uh, inlet side of that system. Well, it, that's going right to the pump. And that is now into the antifreeze. And these filters have been removed and I dumped the water that was in there. So I'm just going to fire that up. Here is the outlet hose on this side. So if everything works according to my calculations, it should draw the water out of here, through there, and out there. There. So let's fire up that switch. See what happens. Clear water. That's a good sign. 
More clear water. Ooh, 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 lots of clear water. We're just gonna fill those uh, jugs there where the filters were. Okay, the last job is uh, empty the water tank and winterize the water system. So, put the pump on, simple process. I just uh, run the pump until uh, the tank is empty. Tank is showing pert near empty. Well, it's showing empty, it's not quite empty. Almost there. So I'll just run that out and uh, empty as much as I can out of the tank and especially the hot water heater. The hot water tank. <laughs> let's not have that conversation again. And then I'll show you what I have to do with that. But let's get rid of uh, as much water as I can out of the system first. Yeah, so we got tank running through. Tank's almost empty. So that's that. Water's done. Shut the water pump up. Bum, bum, bum. Fresh water. Oof. Now, one other last minute job is to take the Keurig coffee maker off the boat just because it may freeze. There may be water in that thing. So I have to take the microwave off. Now, why do I have to take the microwave off? Because if you remember from when I did the, uh, when I swapped out the old microwave and put this larger unit in, I had to make some uh, adjustments on this and and I, I, I discovered something. So let me just take the that thing out and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now that I have the microwave out, I'm going to show you the microwave is plugged in to this factory install receptacle here. Now this receptacle is on a circuit of its own. It is where we are. Microwave. Microwave. <laughs> yeah, that's on its own circuit, which is labeled microwave. And that is, I believe, a 20 amp, but it could be uh, it's probably a 15 but anyways since it's on its own circuit and then the outlets like the rest of the receptacles on the boat are on another circuit um, I had to run a plug for the microwave anyways because there's a receptacle here but it would have looked unsightly to have that wire running around. So I thought, well, I'll plumb it up through here and then drop it down. And then I discovered, well, hold on, there's that receptacle back there. So why don't we just plug it into that? Then it's the only items that are on that one circuit at any time are the microwave and the, uh, the coffee maker, the Keurig. So the only trick to keep that from tripping the breaker is only run one at a time. So it's more often that the coffee maker is going, especially first thing in the morning. Um, so if I get to warm up my uh, oatmeal or something, which I start off every day with a bowl of oatmeal, as the granddaughters call it, my mush, grandpa's mush, then I'll just make sure that that is not turned on. So to take that out, I got to unplug it here and then just drop that extension down through the hole that I drilled in here. Paul, you sure have drilled a lot of holes in your boat. I sure have. Love drilling holes in the boat. So I'm going to unplug that, and then I can drop that wire down, and I'll just put the microwave back. And yes, there's things back there, and I know you guys are going to ask me what they're far for. They're for the Merc cathode system, but that's going to be a video for another day because i got to kind of wrap this up. Um, I'll do that probably in the spring. So that's it. That's winterizing done for another year, another season behind us. And look at the weather. Man, oh man, what did I say the other day? We've had nice weather sometimes right until December, but I mean, we're only in the middle of October um, and it was really cold on the weekend, but here we are again. Well, sorry, Friday was really nice, but then it got cold and colder and yesterday was freezing um, and windy as hell. Look at that. It's beautiful sunshine and nice and calm. Really, really does not put one to the mind of winterizing and shutting the boat down and finishing the season. But 
again, it is what it is, and here we are at the end of another season. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching me fart around with the winter icing on the boat. Uh, the next thing is going to be haul out and then shrink wrap. And uh, like I mentioned, I'll let the boys do the engines, and uh, that'll be it. That'll be a wrap. Literally, it'll be a shrink wrap. Um, I just want to make mention again, this is not an actual step-by-step -step how you should do it or do it yourself type of video. Remember, this is how I did it. Not necessarily the best way or the only way. That's how I do it, and it works for me. So if nothing else, hopefully you uh, pick something up. Whatever. Like I say, a beautiful day. Sad to see it go. Sad to see this boating thing behind us, but looking forward to next year. And I'm going to leave it at that. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Hey guys, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you're going to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new content. And don't forget that I also post daily on Facebook and Instagram, so there's always lots of boating content there to check out. Now, if you'd like to support the channel even more, head on over to my Patreon page where there's even more unique content as well as have early access to my videos. And don't forget that links to all of my accounts plus a whole lot more can be found at BoatingWithBoogaboo.com. And again, thanks for supporting the channel, thanks for following our adventures, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers! Okay, if you remember, if you recall, now if you recall, 